Hi, my name's Daniel, I work at MathSpace, and we're getting a lot of questions at the moment on how you can use MathSpace to teach mathematics remotely. So at the moment in Australia, as I record this, there are several states under lockdown, meaning maths teachers are having to teach their students and classes remotely from home with their students you know, online on their computers working from home as well. If you haven't heard the news, we're opening up our full suite of resources so that if you're not using MathSpace at your school, you can do so for free with as little or as many students and classes as you like for as long as the school is under lockdown. And if you are interested in trialing MathSpace over a longer period of time, like for term three, uh, we can help you out there too. So in this video, I wanted to show you some quick tips on how you can use MathSpace to very quickly set some work for your students to do that's related to what you're currently teaching in class now to make it easier for you to teach maths and easier for the students to learn maths while everyone is outside of the classroom and working from home. Most students in Australia, when they're answering maths questions, they're doing so using questions perhaps from their maths textbook. The issue when they're working from home is because you're not there to look at their work and you don't have the time for every student to individually share their screen with you, you're not there to give the students feedback on the maths questions that they're working on. When students work in math space, they get that feedback from the program and it's actually step by step support. So what I mean by that is if I don't know how to answer a question as a student, I can use a hint. And this doesn't remove any points or give me any penalties or anything like that. We want the students to use the hints. We want them to learn. And what it does is it then guides the student to be able to answer the problem. So as the student, I can enter my work. I can either divide both sides by seven straight away, or I could even you know, write in that first step of having the seven divided by both sides of the equation. I don't have to do that. I could have gone straight to P plus three is equal to seven and that's graded as correct as well. So the students can show as much work as they like. Sometimes students need that step-by-step -step support. Well, if I go back to the hint, I get a new hint that's now based on my last correct step. So this gives that student the extra support that they need as they're working on maths questions from home. There is an online lesson as well that students can refer to where we can read some text to do some more learning and revision of a particular skill. And then in math space, there are also videos next to worked examples so that students can watch videos of teachers who are explaining how to work on a similar problem. Here's another very quick example of a question in math space because we do have various questions like problem solving questions, entering numbers in tables, creating graphs, etc. Here's another equation where the student can input their work if they want to, to solve the problem. But I just want to quickly point out that students don't have to show their work in math space. If they know the answer straight away, they can just enter that too and then move on to their next question. As a teacher in math space, I can come to a curriculum that I'm teaching. Now, keep in mind, we have New South Wales curriculum as well as Australian curriculum and Victorian curriculum. A maths teacher in math space can very quickly create a class just by sharing a join code with the students. So then once they're all set up in math space, you could come to the task templates. So this is where you can find pre-made templates that we at math space have created for you to use. So just coming under groups, I can click the buy math space button. And here under stage two, New South Wales Mathematics, I have a whole bunch of very quick check-in tasks that I could use with my students. So this is that primary school level maths for teachers. So I could come in here and just immediately assign this task, which has 10 questions for my students to complete. If I look at this task and I decide, you know, I wanna make this a bit quicker, a bit smaller, I could click customize and just very quickly remove any questions that perhaps I don't want to give the students. That's great for like warm up activities or exit tickets where you might only want the students working on three or five questions at a time. Alternatively, you might be approaching the end of a particular topic in the maths class. You could just search by year level. I will write year 10 and I'll look at these various topic tasks, which are great to prepare students for perhaps upcoming assessments like a test, for example, where I could just click the quadratics topic task I might have just finished teaching quadratics in my year 10 class, and this will give my students a lot of questions to work on. 
However, I don't recommend setting so many questions to your students if they're learning how to use MathSpace for the first time. It's best to give them smaller tasks first. You have the option as a maths teacher to explore all of our curriculum. We have everything from grade three to year 12, and you could create your own tasks. So just by coming to the textbooks button here, you can click this button here to then find, you know, which curriculum you want to work with. And then you can come to a topic like equations and graphs, for example, and you could just simply assign your students an adaptive task. And that means MathSpace will just give the questions to the students to do, and it will be based on their individual performance. So, you know, some students might have to answer more questions than less, depending on their ability. Now you could set the target mastery. And so I would highly recommend just keeping this low, especially in the context of online learning, where it's already quite difficult for students to keep up with the curriculum. And also if your students are learning how to use MathSpace for the first time, you don't wanna make it too tricky for them. Alternatively, you might just want to choose the specific questions you would like your students to work on. Maybe you'd like them all to work on the same questions. So you can just explore our curriculum in the same way, just by coming to the textbooks, choosing which curriculum level you'd like your students to be working at. You can then come to a chapter in our online textbook, look at a lesson, and then you can hand pick uh, the questions that you would like your students to work on. You can explore other skills as well. So, you know, we can gradually increase the difficulty of this task. You know, I could even jump into a different curriculum like stage five, for example, and then come find a topic and then choose some questions from there. That way you're getting your students to work across, you know, multiple year levels to help them perhaps build up their proficiency. When your students are working in MathSpace, you get this rich data that you can look at to help you. It can be as if you're right there next to the students watching them work, because I can look at an activity report like this where I can see one student, uh, Mary here, who's been answering questions in MathSpace. So she's currently active. I can see her here as an active student. And so she's in the last couple of minutes been answering some MathSpace questions. Whereas if I look at this student like Claude, I can see he's answered one question, took him a couple of minutes, but has since timed out. So I'm looking at the live activity of my class, but I can see that Claude is now inactive. So perhaps, He's no longer sitting in his computer. He might be distracted doing something else. And it's a great opportunity for you as a teacher working remotely from home to reach out to that student. I can scroll down and I can look at students like Mary who I can see are active. She's had four questions correct, three partially correct, two incorrect. And I can see she's working on her tr trigonometry. Claude on the other hand is inactive hasn't been seen working in the program actually for the last 29 minutes and only answered one or two questions there, only spent a couple of minutes in the program. That's it from me. Hopefully you can see the benefit now of using MathSpace in your classroom to help you with remote teaching and learning of mathematics. If you're not using MathSpace at the moment and you would like to, please get in touch with us. We'd be more than happy to help you get set up and started as soon as possible. Please do keep in mind if you are a teacher in Victoria, for example, where it's looking like we might be going back to school again, fingers crossed, I live in Victoria, I'd like to not be in lockdown anymore as well. Uh, it's probably worth your time exploring MathSpace as a potential resource anyway, because unfortunately with the nature of the coronavirus and the Delta strain, even though lockdowns finish, they can start up again in a moment's notice. So. Please do get in touch. We'd be happy to help you get set up with MathSpace and get started using this with your students. Thanks very much.